So we notice this center tap is grounded and this lead over here, can y'all see that? It's called minus and it's called plus. So the way this is wired, notice both these sides are not grounded. When I look at this one, notice this is uh, connected to common, right? On this thing. This one, the minus and the plus is not connected to common. So what we have is we have a common right here, but if you look, well, what we end up with is a positive full wave center tap power supply right here. And if we follow the AC, we end up with a negative full wave center tap right here. So what they what they have is they're using this bridge as two full wave bridge rectifiers. I mean, no, I'm sorry, it's full two full wave center tap rectifiers. So Y'all see that? Uh, this goes down to a, a, a 7912. A 7912 is a fixed 12 volt regulator. Uh, this goes up to a 7812, which is a so these guys are very very popular. So 70, the 7800 series, these are positive regulators, and then the 7900 series are negative regulators, and they're they're exactly the same except one of them's designed for a positive power supply, and one of them's designed for a negative power. Supply. So on this power supply, these LEDs tell us a lot. If they're not on, what does that mean? Because they're on the regulated sides. So this is unregulated. This is regulated, right? So if the LED's not on, then what does that tell us a lot? Could be the LED fan, but if all we have to do is just walk measure right here. So if there's no 12 volt supply there, we measure on 12.4 should have over minus 12, right? You understand? So our unregulated has always got to be what? Above the regulated, right? You understand that? So very easy. I check right here. I measure nothing. I check right here and I measure, you know, 14, minus 14, 15 volts. And what would be the problem? Real easy to troubleshoot, guys. I got nothing here. I got something there. So it's right here, it's wrong there. What would be the problem? Well, it's not something. There's something there. It's not something. You, be, I could say something's open, and that's really not a good answer, right? You understand? It's like I go into the doctor and I'm dying. And he says something's wrong with you. <laughs> okay, something's wrong with you. It's like when I was in there, say, Mr. Ramey, you got an infection somewhere, but we don't know where it's at. So. Well, guys, look, what's between here and there? It's got to be the 7912. It's got to be the 7912, right? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the regulator. The capacitor couldn't call, if the capacitor was bad, it would be open, which means this right here would be real low. This guy right here would be real low. It wouldn't be regulated. And if I looked at the scope, I would see my regulator doing this garbage. Uh, but it would be clipped off at the top, right? You understand? So uh, if my capacitor was bad, if I can do this without zooming in. Oops. Uh, it's not switching over. If I was right here, uh, then uh, so if I saw something like this, and then the top was clipped off, and then it come down. And then I come over here and saw this, and the top was clipped off at 12 volts, and I saw it come down. Then the power plug that. Uh, but the problem is, you would have to have an oscilloscope to see that, right? Okay, what if you don't have an oscilloscope? Well, what's going to happen is your output, your regulated voltage is going to be real low, right? You understand? So now it's going to be less than 2 dB over pi, because <laughs> we're cutting off the top. And my unregulated is going to be below, it's going to be below what I need, right? It's going to be maybe... <laughs> So over here, instead of being like 14 volts, it's going to be what two V peak over pi now because now it's not it's not regulated. 
So my my input voltage is my output voltage is going to be real high, and my input voltage, <coughs> my unregulated voltage is going to be real what real low. I said that backwards. It. So my output voltage will be low. My input unregulated voltage would be low. Then it could be the capacitor. But if I look on my output and I see no output, and over my unregulated is what it's supposed to be, right? It measures 14 volts, and my output measures zero. There's only one thing in there, and that would be the watt. The actual regulator itself, and these go bad. These go bad often. If I measure zero volts on all my power supplies, what would be my first thing to look at? All my power supplies measure zero. Huh? Now, I would probably go over and check your fuse. I'll check the fuse first. That'd be the first thing I check. Well, that's not true. First thing I check to see if it's plugged in. You know, you don't know how many things I fixed because they were just turned off. This thing's not working. Nothing's working over here. Just in, just in my class, people over there measuring the outputs of this stuff, and they said, "I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting anything." You go over and you turn the trainer, or you plug the trainer in. I'm not going to tell you how many times I've done that since I've been. Yeah, so the first thing I would do is check to see if it's plugged in. Then I'd check the fuse. Uh, then after that, if we got nothing out, then odds are it's going to be the wall. Uh, what's nice about your fuse? What's nice about the trainer? If the fuse is good and you turn it on, the neon bulb's going to come on. <laughs> so if that neon bulb comes on, it means what? It means the fuse is good. Right? If the neon bulb doesn't come on, uh, then either the fuse is bad or it's not plugged in. So that's pretty easy. So if I got zero volts on all my power supplies, uh, then I would, first thing I would do is just check the fuse. Right. If one of my power supplies is not working, if it's not giving us what we need, uh, then I would come up here and I would check the input and I would check I would check the output and the if the input's low, uh, then what I would probably do is check the output of my transformer. If my output of my transformer is what it's supposed to be, right? You understand? And then this output is low. It's one of two things. It's either what the filter capacitor is bad or you got an open diode. Uh, if you had an oscilloscope, you could find that in a heartbeat. Uh, these are four wave rectifiers, right? You understand? If I look, it should be 120 hertz, right? If I check it and it's 60 hertz, it means what? It means one of your diodes is bad, right? But that would be an oscilloscope. If you don't know that, guys, then you would check the, how do you check a capacitor? You might be able to do this uh, with it turned off because uh, your diode, you got a good resistor here, you might be able to do it. You won't be able to see it charge, discharge fully because your ohm meter, uh, I'm sorry, it would because this is, uh, what we do is, uh, I need to show y'all this. So power supplies luckily are going to have really big filters in them. So we need a power source. Do I have a power source here? On what scales? Huh? Yeah, where do we get where can we get where can we get a, a power or voltage out of our uh, meter? You know, yeah, good. What's going on? Let's see if I can find it down here. Well, heck, I guess I closed it out, guys.
So luckily, our power supplies have really good uh, big capacitors in them. Uh, best I got here, I think, is uh, we'll see if it works. This is this is only one microfarad. This might not you might not be able to see this. Might have to go get a bigger capacitor. This is a hundred microfarad. This meter, by the way, don't show overload. It shows the voltage it'll put out. So this is kind of confusing in this meter right here. So I'm just going to take a meter. And then I'm going to put it across my capacitor. Huh? I need to put it on. So I got it on diode check is what it is. So that's and so what we do, and the bigger the capacitor is, the longer it'll take to charge it. And then once it charges, it shows what? Overload. So then then you swap it around and you should be able to charge it. To, it's got to charge it pretty fast. The big ones can charge over. If you got a problem, guys, uh, what you can do to make it charge slower is you can come up and get a resistor and put it in series with it. Uh, and then it will cause it to charge slower. So this capacitor right here, so if I come over here and I measure ohms in both directions and it don't charge, what does that mean? It's bad. Or if it never charges, these big electrolytics. Now these little tiny ceramic capacitors, they charge so fast that your meter you can't you can't ever see it on, on these right here. If you had an analog meter, you'd probably be able to see it. But the problem with digital meters, it, it has to go through an analog to digital converter and it takes what? It takes time. So your little old small meters, I'd, uh, you won't ever you won't ever see that. Uh, but you can actually see this one charge, right? Don't worry about your meter going minus. It actually shows minus ohms because you're swapping polarity. You see a charge? So this is what you're looking for. And the bigger it is, what? The longer it's going to take to charge to, to the resistance of your meter. So a little old tiny small one, you can do what? You can get you a big resistor and put it in series and you can see it there. So that's a real fast way to do what? To check a, it's a go, no go. Right? Resistance in both directions means it's leaky. Open in both directions means it's open. And then if you see it charged like that, then it's a pretty good chance that it's what? It's okay, right? You understand that? I'm sorry I didn't tell y'all that before. Some of y'all haven't had AC. And that's one of the things uh, that you look for in, a, in AC is uh, these capacitors. Uh, this one you wouldn't be able to see. Those are those are post filters. Odds are uh, those they recommend those depending on how far the uh, the outputs and the inputs are apart from the regulator. So if your outputs or inputs are right by side the regulator, then you probably won't need those post those post and pre filters right here. Y'all see what I'm talking about? These guys and uh, the data sheet tells you which what you need to do. Because the regulator is constantly moving around trying to maintain a constant output, right? You understand? And when it moves around, it could cause noise to get on your outputs. And those what those are what these right here are for, just to get rid of that noise. This guy right here, 2,200 microfarads. Uh, you can check that. Uh, probably check that in the circuit, right? You understand? If it don't charge up all the way, you might have to add, you might have to isolate one one leg. But odds are, if you see it charging at all, even if it don't go to infinity, if it, if it don't go to infinity, it don't mean the capacitor is bad. It means there's some might be something in parallel with it, right? Y'all understand that? And so normally, if you see it charge at all, we assume it's it's good. Of course, these bridge rectifiers, y'all remember how to check those? How do you check these?
you take it from the AC side, right? So you put put one of your leads on the AC side, touch both sides, right? You understand? And then you switch over to the other side and change polarities and then go both, both ways. Are we okay there? Uh, these are our variable regulators. The LM317s is a poly, positive variable regulator. The LM337s is a negative regulator. These are adjustable, which means this is the one you can actually do what? Adjust. And so these are connected to the, the uh, POTS wired as rheostats. These guys are pretty interesting too. Uh, what they try to do is constantly maintain a voltage between your reference and your output. It's like two volts. So if this output tried to drop down and, you, and it's trying to maintain a voltage between the reference and this, if it tries to drop down, then the regulator would automatically raise it up, right? You understand? Uh, so what you do is you change this resistance right here and that, that would cause the output to drop, drop down to maintain that voltage, right? Or go up to maintain those voltages. Uh, and they give you the formulas on these, by the way, on how to calculate uh, this this resistor right here. Now, this is the one that's important right here. So, and then this is the 5-volt regulator. We lose this one a lot uh, because uh, I don't know why. Uh, but we lose this guy right here a lot. Uh, the problem we have with fusing multiple power supplies like this is that this fuse has to be capable of handling all the maximum currents of three power supplies. And not only that, but also the, this transformer that we're using, right? So that means we could act, we could literally come in here and do what? Short this guy here out, and it wouldn't pull enough what? Current to blow, to blow the fuse over here. Most of the time, fuses are not in there to, uh, protect from shorts, it's in there to protect for what we call short circuits, right? You understand the difference? And uh, we know that that's not true because even in this class, we've shorted out our transformer. We shorted out this guy and what did it do? It burned the transformer up and guess what never happened? Fuse never blew. So what we might need to do is recalculate this fuse. Uh, because we should not be, in any of the classes that we teach, we should never be uh, meeting the maximum current of any of these power supplies. So we might look at that. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, I forgot what the amperage, I'll give that to you, but uh, below a certain below a certain amperage, your your fuse is rated at 200. Normally a fuse is rated at 150% of your maximum current. And that's above a certain power supply. Uh, when you get down below that, then the maximum current is 200% of your out, of your rated current. And that's on the primary side. Y'all understand the difference between current on the primary and current on the secondary? On a step down transformer, where would the current be the most? In the primary or the secondary? On a step down transformer. So what happens is a, a, a transformer, uh, what doesn't change to a transformer? So if I needed a 100 watt load over here, what would my primary have to provide? So when I turn a hundred watt light bulb on in my house, how much do my power? How much power does my power company get? Hundred watt. So transformers do not change watts. They do not change watts, right? You understand? They don't change power. In fact, there's no such thing as a hundred percent efficiency. Basically, power out, power out is equal to power in times the efficiency, and the efficiency is always less than one. Okay. But just, just for us working here, you know, uh, we'll use the, the transformer as 100% efficient. There's no machine that's 100% efficient, right? You understand? So even in work, work in equals what? Work out times what? Times the efficiency, and the efficiency is always less than one. So that's the way we do gears. I mean, if I had to run a, a, 
if I had to do a certain amount of work on my output, I've got to put a little bit more work on the input, right? You understand that? So it don't change power. So just let's make this easy. Uh, let's say I've got 100 volts over here, and over here I've got 10 volts. Well, over here, I is going to be equal to what? 100 watts, right, over 100 volts. So what's my current? One amp. Over here, I'm getting 100 watts at 10 volts. What's my current? 10 amps. So my primary current is always less. So if I'm getting 10, if I'm getting 10 amps over here, am I going to fuse my primary at 10 amps? Yes or no? Better say no, because I could flat burn my transformer up and, and it wouldn't even burn. That means I could pull 100 amps on my output and my before my primary fuse blew, right? So when we start calculating this fuse, what we're talking about is this fuse would be either 150% of the primary current, not the secondary current, of the primary current, right? You understand? Or it would be 200% depending on where the break is. So that means I might, the, the most I would do would, would be 2 amps. So my primary would have a 2 amp fuse, right? You understand? And then we could get 20 amps because fuses are in there to protect against short circuits. That makes sense. So no, your primary, so you'll look at these fuses, like if I looked at the fuse on that trainer right there. We got it, thank you. Seven hundred fifty million. Uh, the, the 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 fixed regulators are one amp regulators, right? You understand that? So this is seven hundred fifty milliamps. And you come over here and say, well, this is a one amp supply. This is a one amp supply. The five volt supply is a five amp supply. And then I come over here that well, that's seven amps, and you fuse it to seven amps, and you could burn your tr you could burn everything up, right? You understand that? So odds are uh, we need to probably go maybe to a half amp or even less. Uh, what we would probably do is just basically play around with it because what's happening is this is the second this is the second uh, uh, transformer that we have melted. And we shouldn't be able to do that, right? If this fuse and it never even burn, which means what? There's fusing this thing too big. So the way it should be, if I short out any one of those power supplies, it should pop this fuse. So I wanted to show y'all the code. So this is the transformer. 